basketball is back. Are you ready? It's finally here. The wait is over. Unbelievable. Let's go. Basketball time. Oh, you better buckle up. Liam for a tree. College basketball returns, and so glad you could join us from historic Reynolds Coliseum. And the lid lifter in 2023-24 for the NC State Wolfpack. Pack back in action against Charlotte. The ninth all-time meeting between these two programs. Uh, separated by about two hours of Interstate 85. Should be a packed house tonight. Glad you could join us once again with the Hall of Famer, Debbie Antonelli. I am Roy Philpott. And Debbie, excited for the return of college basketball. Finally, it arrives in Raleigh. Well, let's get it going, right, Roy? I mean, uh, they have been waiting a while to see what this new team at NC State looks like. And I'm telling you, I've had been to a couple of practices. I've had a chance to check them out. I think NC State fans are going to like what they see. No question. And Saniah Rivers returns as the sixth player of the year last year in the ACC combined with all that new talent. Well, Saniah Rivers at 6'1 can generate her own offense because she's long and active on the defensive end. She's got great ball pressure, good hands. She knows how to rotate. She plays the angles. And she's got explosiveness in the gaps. On the offensive end, she can create her own off the bounce. She's improved her three-point shooting. And NC State's relying on her leadership in the backcourt, along with Isaiah James, who has a lot of style to her game. She can create any time, three-level scoring. And Madison Hayes, who gives you consistent leadership, good decision-maker with the ball in her hands, a very good three-point shooter as well. And for the 49ers, Deja Lawrence leads the charge. Preseason second team, all AAC. And remember, Charlotte, a member of the American Conference now, coming in from Conference USA. So technically the 49ers' first game in that league. But Lawrence, she played overseas this past summer. Debbie, she can score at all three levels. Boy, I'm really excited to see what Deja Lawrence has added to her game. She's a big-time scorer, and the American knows on the scouting report that she's going to get the best defender every night. NC State's going to have to keep her in front, keep her off the free throw line. She is a dangerous player who makes everyone else around her better. So NC State and its top five recruiting class in action for the first time, coming off another 20-win season last year, an NCAA tournament appearance and an early loss to Princeton. Expectations as high as ever, and this talent level could be ultra high for the pack this fall and into the winter. Our opening tap controlled by NC State. We are underway in Reynolds, and welcome to college basketball. NC State will start with Sanaya Rivers running the offense on the top of the floor. Westmore likes that four out, one in around River Baldwin, their 6'5 center, and there's James with a pull up. And the pull-up has NC State on the board first. We take a look at the starting five for the 49ers from the Queen City. Lawrence, Busick, Porter, Houston, and Rembrandt. As head coach Kara Consuegra has gone into the portal to add some talent. And she told us hopefully some offense to this team this year. Out of bounds, back to the back. You know what, Roy? This Charlotte team will be undersized every night. Yet, if you know Kara Consuegra and her background, they will be gritty and tough. They will be prepared, and they are going to play hard. NC State on their hands full tonight, dealing with their balance. James Hayes, Rivers, Collins, and Baldwin, the starting five. A new look rotation. Well, that talent gone from last year's team. And how about a three-pointer? Top of the key to make it 5-0. And James connects from downtown. When she is focused, locked in, she can be a big-time player for NC State. They have more balance and offense than people may have given them credit for. The recruiting class ranked as high as number four by ESPN for head coach Wes Moore in year number 11. Off the pump fake, three-pointer off the mark, and a rebound controlled by River Baldwin. Inside of the foul call, that'll be free throws for Mimi Collins with a strong move in traffic. Here's the thing I love about NC State is their push and transition off the miss, and Mimi Collins has great hands, makes a very athletic move around the rim to get to the free throw line. Personal call on Rembert Collins. Much expected of her this season. Began her career at Maryland, seven points and four boards a game last year. 
Debbie, she's played in 125 career games. You love that experience, right, coming back for Coach Moore. You know what? That's part of the product, right? In college basketball today is you're finding fifth-year and sixth-year players, and that makes the game better in my estimation. If you're sticking around for your fifth or sixth year, you love the game. I mean, if I could have played college basketball for six or seven years, I, I would have played college basketball for that. You know what? Sign I'm me school. up. <laughs> Sign me up right now, man. I'm in. At the bounce, Porter. Two minutes in, 49ers trying to crack the scoring column off the fake. And the runner comes up short for Rimber. The putback go up and in, and Charlotte's on the board. Tracy Houston. So Houston. Gives the 49ers their first two points of the night, and it's 7-2. Quick trigger for the three, and Rivers now. When you play undersized like Charlotte, you have to be able to push and transition, and you have to speed up the game on both sides. They like to play fast, and they want to push, but they also have the ability to speed you up on the defensive end with their multiple looks. This will be a good test for NC State. The dime nearly dropped by Lawrence, and instead the three-pointer off the mark. Pack control it. Here comes James. And the contested layup, no good. A chance for the 49ers to stop and pop, and Lawrence can't connect. I mean, Lawrence gets to the nail in transition. That's a high percentage shot for her. So now Rivers will set up the offense. Collins near the top of the key, a five-point advantage for NC State. High ball screen for Hayes, who thought about it for a moment. And now to Collins for three, well short. So Isaiah James makes a couple of buckets in a row, and then NC State has gone away from her. See, this is going to be the part of a maturing team that's early. But if you have someone with a hot hand, I don't care if it's the first two possessions of the game, you keep feeding them. Try to find ways to get Isaiah James the ball. I like that motion. Fast start, that's added until it cools down. Screen for Lawrence and a fadeaway. The shot was blocked at a late whistle. And free throws coming as Shania Rivers picks up her first personal. And Lawrence is going to find a way to score. She can do it at all three levels. And West doesn't like the call. And, you know, when you play 29 seconds of very good defense and you force a contested shot, you don't want to foul. Going to the line, number 10, Deja Lawrence, 82% at the strike a season ago. First team all conference USA. Almost 17 points per. She grew up in Greenville, North Carolina, then moved to Charlotte. And has really built herself a great career for the 49ers and coach Consuegra. You can't have enough guards that can score in college basketball, Roy, and she can score. And they have a lot of new pieces, and off the free throws, here comes the full court press. NC State doing a great job of switching sides of the floor, and there she is again, Isaiah James. James with eight, the lead back to six. Spin and traffic lost it. And a chance for three. Sanaya Rivers inside. This is a great advance pass up the floor. Look how hard NC State sprints ahead of the ball. James eyes up. Sanaya Rivers with an excellent catch and finish to earn a trip to the line. First points of the night. For number 22. Started her career at South Carolina. Number national Gatorade Player of the Year. And three to Hardway makes it 13 to four NC State. Forty Niners projected as the 10th best team in the American this year. First season in the AAC as we talked about. 
Massive conference realignment around the country. Open look for Rembrandt, and that's off the back out. NC State doing a pretty good job. I think they've only given up one offensive rebound. NC State picked eighth in the ACC preseason poll. I thought Rivers was going to trigger instead and pass it back outside. And an open look for James again. Come on, Roy. Isaiah James, you go ahead and shift till your arm falls off. What a start for the Wolfpack. And James, the 5'9 junior, the lefty. It's a beautiful looking stroke. She is deep in the corner. We've seen a little bit of everything from James early. NC State in the midst of a 9-0 run, expanding its lead against Charlotte Westmore, year number 11, the Johnson University graduates. Eight other career wins, Debbie. Uh, there's not many in the game today that have more than that. No, Wes is such a great tactician. He is a tremendous X and L guy. He loves the four out, one in. His teams excel in that. 35 years as a head coach is a long time. 11 at NC State. And when you look at what they've lost over last year and, and this core group that is back, I think they're a little bit underestimated in the league. Yeah, picked eighth in the ACC, a league that started out eight and one through the first night of action yesterday. Out of the timeout, 49ers have it. The mid-range is there. So that'll make it 16 to six on the jumper by Rembrandt. Rembert's a 6'2", redshirt sophomore, transfer from Illinois, and when you come off the timeout, that's a great job by Kara Consuegra to get her team to play their pace on the offensive end. And they look, here's a, an example of trying to speed the game up by extending their defense to the half court. Back into his own. Better know where James zone, is. A little swarm. Quarter three, it's Bottoms for Collins. Mimi Collins is a capable three-point shooter. Last year, she made nine. I think she's worked on it in the offseason. Look for some improvement there. And the form silky smooth, 19 to six. The pack, four of six from distance, including four straight makes from the floor. And a foul called against NC State. This is what you want to see when you run the four out one. And look at the shot fake by James. Draws two green jerseys. Collins ready to catch and shoot the corner. It's a second personal on Rivers. Zoe Brooks checks in, the talented freshman. Number nine player in the country according to ESPN. And off the rebound. Brooks gets it outside to James and a rare miss. It's a good decision, though, in transition. Jerseys are back in green. You don't want to over-penetrate. James had a wide-open look, and here comes James on the defensive end. One on three, one on four, and she'll draw a foul. Free throws coming for Isaiah James. I thought at the end of last year for Westmore that Isaiah James, who started the last six games, played exceptionally well, and I thought she was starting to emerge as a crowd favorite in Reynolds because she's got a little flash to her game, and people sometimes people like to see that. It's exciting because she's a very good offensive player, very skilled, very capable. Already with 11 points, James. 64% at the line a year ago. She'll get one more. The foul is on the Akite. That'll be her first, the freshman from the Ivory Coast. And right now, Isaiah, Isaiah James outscoring Charlotte. 13 to 6. This was a 7-4 game and an offensive foul call. And that goes against Busek, her first. Screening a point of emphasis this year in the women's game. Coach 
watching three minutes to play in a fast moving first quarter but the ball movement for the pack an open look and it's another on that shot from the corner for james 16 on the board for number 10 in white Smith in traffic. She'll roll it up and in. And Amani Smith, the Gulf Coast State transfer. That is a tough two, Roy. Back to five from the last six from the floor. And an offensive foul. This will go against Madison Hayes, her first. Now, this is a good example of the new rule in women's college basketball. No more lower defensive box. The arc restricted area on the floor doesn't count anymore. That's for the men. The women's cylinder is right underneath the basket. So the, the block charge call is going to look a little bit different this year. Now, one and two as a player, when you know that restricted area is painted off, and it doesn't really apply to your particular game. That's that's something you got to think about. Elbow J is short. James controls the rebound. Sorry, James, the career high is 20 points. A little bit. Everything is a perimeter jump shot right now, but they're making them. Collins with two triples in the first quarter. 27 to 8. It's going to say Debbie. Isaiah, Zah 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 James, rather. Career high is 20 points. She's already got 16 in the first eight minutes tonight. And NC State on fire to start. I mean, they have the floor spread well. This is a veteran group on the court. The core group starts. All players returning from last year. And we're going to get a chance to look at number three, five, and white right here with the ball. Zoe Brooks, the very heralded freshman at the point. First signee that was a McDonald's All-American since 2019. He checked James, and she was bumped on the three. She's going to get three free throws. James did have 23 points in their exhibition game. Now, Charlotte just has to uh, find a way to move the ball. They're really having some trouble getting into any rhythm offensively. And I know Coach Consuegra was talking about how much better her team is offensively this year. This is a tough opening game going into Reynolds Coliseum. It's become a very tough place to go in and win. James with 17, make it 18 points in our first quarter. She makes this next free throw just one point away from tying her career high in a game. I mean, she's on pace for 40 tonight. That would be fun to watch if you like offense like me. We've seen some very good performances in the first two days of women's college basketball. It's been a great start. Block inside, James controls. She stepped on the inline and she was thinking about points 20 and 21. Well, Madison Hayes did a really good job of rotating over and helping on that roll, that pick and roll. And see, that time Charlotte did a good job of clearing out the side, going the two-man game on the strong side. And NC State's defense has been excellent in the first quarter. Smith will trigger. Charlotte run its offense, approaching a minute to go in our first quarter. The Niners in search of some offense. And another steal, here comes Hayes. One on two, James wants it, Hayes up it in. A little Euro step around the D. And a bounce pass, last touch by Collins out of bounds. Charlotte 19 on the shot clock. 32 to eight. What a start for the pack. I think this NC State group on the floor has a chance to be a really good defensive team for Westmore.
Amy Collins the rebound. Look back back at it, Zoe Brooks, and she was fouled. Trying to work inside the free throw area. NC State in the bonus, Brooks, freshman from Plainfield, New Jersey. Search of her first points in college. And this is a player, that's a number that you're going to hear a lot more from in 2023-24. One more free throw coming. Don't forget, coming up Sunday, the Lehigh men take out North Carolina, followed by a women's doubleheader, Louisville and DePaul. And the Tar Heels hosting Davidson. We'll wrap up the night with nothing but not the crews in Durham. What a way to tip off this season right here on ACC and also on the ESPN app. NC State will get the ball back for one more possession here. Charlotte trying to spread them out. Six second differential between the clocks. A step back, Lawrence. That's a three, and it's short. Rebound claimed by Hayes. No spot James, and now Zoe Brooks behind the back. And off glass. How sweet was that? Start for the Wolfpack. Isaiah James leading the way. She hits a mid range, she hits a transition, she can space it to the corner and catch and shoot. What a big first quarter! The best in NC State's history. All you need to know about the first 10 minutes tonight is NC State's on pace to score 144 points. The primary reason why is Zaya James, Debbie, she went off for 19 in the first quarter. My goodness, you talk about ready to play. No one has ever scored 19 points in the first quarter at NC State. Four for five outside the arc. Check this out right here, the most in a quarter in NC State history. That is impressive. I already got one shoot till your arm falls off in, Roy. I hope I get a second one in for Charlotte because they need to pick it up. Shooters love shooters. I would concur. 36 to 8, our score. Start of the second quarter. NC State's highest point total last year also came against Charlotte. It's 96 on the board. They're on pace for well north of that number tonight. 49ers back to work. Deja Lawrence, preseason all conference. And the pump fake of a three, she comes up short. Well, they have tried to run a few sets for Deja Lawrence to get her free. They need to get her going. But I'm telling you, as good as NC State's offense was in the first quarter, their defense was equally as good. They have high hands and can test everything. Fair miss for James. One more basket, that's her new career high. Lawrence, no. Ripped away by Busey. We'll go back to NC State. Wes Moore has to be pleased with the focus from the jump. I mean, his team was ready to go. Matty Cox has checked in for the first time. Another talented freshman, Flower Mountain, Texas. Lizzie Williamson also on the floor. Transfer from Southern Utah. All she was last year was the WAC Defensive Player of the Year. So you add in talented freshmen, you bring in other players, Debbie, that have already played in college for four years and picked up significant awards. The ingredients here on a potential championship recipe are certainly interesting as Brooks is off the mark. Good hustle by Cox to keep that alive. Now you got numbers. With her stripped and fouled, she's back on the court with the two personals. A great hustle by Maddie Cox, which gave NC State numbers going the other way. Watch right here. It's a foot race. She taps it to Sonia Rivers, and then Rivers goes on a straight line drive. Nobody stops her. She gets fouled and gets to the line. In your opinion, what is the potential of Sonia Rivers in a season like this year? 
surrounded by the kind of talent and scores that we think she could be surrounded with. Well, let me start with the defensive end because I think she can set the tone. She can guard one through five. And when you have somebody that can have that kind of defensive ability, you can change the way you scheme and it can help everyone else be a little bit better at what they do. That's the first thing. Secondly, her ball handling skills have improved, her three-point range has improved, and I know she is a competitor. I mean, Sanaya is going to give you her best effort every night. And that's infectious when you're the leader and when you work that hard on the floor. The lead at 30. Rivers controls the rebound. off the mark and Williamson was reaching for the rebound and called for the foul. It's a really good box out inside by Charlotte. You know if you're Kara Consuegra you got to tell your team like we just got to chip away a little bit here. We've got to get some good offense. Got to move the ball. I think they need to get Deja Lawrence going. I mean she, she's got to find a way to get herself in rhythm. She's either got to get to the free throw line or make a play on defense. And her only two points, Debbie, coming from the charity stripe so far. The layup, no, and NC State's defense continues. Protect that rim and keep Charlotte at bay. Wolfpack shooting 59%, 6 of 12 from 3. How about 12 attempts at the free throw line already, Debbie, and Pack have yet to miss at the strike. That's going to be offensive. River Baldwin. Now, nobody's going to like that call because it was a loose ball, and it looked like the Charlotte player had her on the arms, and, and this is a pivot by River Baldwin. This is a tough one right here. This is going to, be look, this is going to look good on film tomorrow, right? Okay, right. She's had her hands on her. Oh, maybe the elbow. Are they going to look at this one? No. Nope. Now, Wade had position. River came in, and the collision prompted a personal foul. And on the other end, how about Baldwin draws the charge? Well, see, Brian, this is going to give me a chance to tell you about one of the rules that I wish was different in the women's game, and that is the men have the cylinder rule, the women do not. So River Baldwin didn't have a chance to pivot because there was somebody in her space. But right here, she obtains legal guarding position and at 6'5", moves her feet and gets in the path of the ball handler. Does a nice job drawing the charge. Open look for Hayes. Karen's out of bounds back to the 49ers. Charlotte just 3 of 21 to start. NC State's defense, a big reason why. Knowing Wes Moore like we do and how long we've covered his teams, he always starts with defense, even though I think his four out one in is really hard to guard. He had a lot of options off of that. And he's really good when he has a, an undersized four player that can shoot the three. And he's got a couple on this team. Was tracked down by Lawrence. It pops out to Cox. Here's Zoe Brooks. If you're Westmore, given how good you've been from three-point range, do you try to tell your ladies, hey, let's run our offense, let's try to make some other things happen? Well, I haven't seen them play through the post yet, and that's one thing that they're going to have to be good at. You see Rio Baldwin posting up strong inside. And that creates some opportunity, and look at that shot by Zoe Brooks. I mean, she just throws it up there and it goes in. That's how good it's been for NC State tonight. Zoe Brooks. Forcing her way. Near the basket, up and in, showing you the strength for a freshman, the 2022 Memphis Area Player of the Year. Number nine in the Hoop Girls Top 100, McDonald's All-American. Missed the free throw, Debbie, but she already has six points, two of three from the floor. One of four McDonald's All-Americans on the roster for NC State this year. 
River Baldwin, Mimi Collins, and Madison Hayes, the other three. Excuse me, That's the most I think NC State's ever had, Roy. No question. And I was just going to correct myself. It's Mallory Collier that was the Memphis area player of the year. We've got a lot of accolades for these four pack freshmen. That's a D3. And Charlotte remains scoreless from behind the arc. 0 for 9 from distance. Is 12 and 19 a year ago. And a traveling violation. Cox turns it over. The 49ers. 49ers have missed their last 10 shots. Samani Smith checks back in. Debbie, isn't it interesting how teams come in and with so many new additions in the transfer portal? Plus, how they generally recruit. It, to me, it feels like it could take a little longer for some programs to kind of gather their identity and figure things out. Like we talk about Charlotte, transfers coming in, freshmen coming in. Sometimes it takes a little while. I think it can take some some time. You know, on defense, though, it, it shouldn't be too hard to get connected quickly. And there's a lot of different concepts you can play in defensively, but fundamentally, if you stay between your player and the basket and you have high hands on a closeout and you communicate like that right there, you can get some stops and get some numbers going the other way. Lacey still rejected inside. A foul called on the other end and a chance for three. Deja Lawrence finally with a field goal and a spark for the 49ers. That's exactly the kind of play I'm talking about for Daisy Lawrence to get herself going. Thirty-point lead for the NC State Wolfpack. One of the big reasons why Debbie, these very talented freshmen, of which we've seen a ton of Zoe Brooks already, McDonald's All-American already providing a massive impact, and now Maddie Cox and Lacey Steele starting to see some action as well. Brooks and Steele are the backcourt of the future. Maddie Cox comes from a great basketball family, including her, one of her older sisters, Lauren, who was an All-American at Baylor, who won a national championship with Kim Mulkey as a head coach. I think this freshman group is going to grow together and, and be a very solid foundation moving forward for Westmore. He's got a lot to build on. Remember last year, he didn't take any freshmen. Steele was bothered trying to penetrate up the left side and was blocked in foul. Freshman from Edmond, Oklahoma. Westmore told us she's a really good three-point shooter. We're excited to see what she could do in that department. She's Oklahoma Gatorade Player of the Year as well. Brooks should take her time. Spot Collins, left wide open. Good box down, a rebound by Hayes. Just talked about steal from downtown, and she was too strong. The pack offense has cooled down somewhat. The defense is not. Lawrence with a rebound. And a moving screen. That's an offensive foul. Pack will get it back. That's the second moving screen called on Charlotte. NC State, uh, to your point, Roy, started 10 for 14 from the floor since they've cooled off their 1 for 10. And Charlotte continues to struggle offensively. They haven't made a three in nine that attempts. Tracy so Tracy Houston picks up the foul on the screen. We'll pack get the basketball. That was one of the things I was asking you about because, I mean, you know it as well as anybody else, but a lot of times a team makes a good number of threes in the first half, first quarter, and it becomes fool's goal. You think you're going to continue that kind of run, and it just doesn't happen. Well, you have to show some versatility and maturity here, right? Now you got to try to play through the post, play through the middle third. 
Collins from 15 at that time. And NC State has definitely cooled off. Lawrence rejected. Collins rips it away, nearly turns it over, and does. I love the competitive edge of Mimi Collins. I think she's a fighter. All right, she can battle. She's got incredible toughness about her on both ends of the floor. Been stuck on this 40 to 10 score for about the last two minutes or so. Lawrence will nice. size up a three for a moment. Yeah, nice re-screen on the top of the, the floor, and a good job by Hayes to get over the top of that. Got back down to five. Rembrandt off the mark. NC State continues to take Charlotte deep into the shot clock. And think about what Kara Consuegro told us, that ideally they want to get a shot off within the first 10 seconds of the shot clock. They've got a new starting point guard, so it's going to take some time, and she indicated the offense has been a work in progress at times. Hard work on the offensive glass, and that was Madison Hayes. Finally bumped and fouled, she'll shoot a pair. You know, Madison Hayes is going to be that glue player for NC State because she's capable of putting up a big number, but she also is a player that does a lot of the gritty things that you have to do. She's an excellent screener. She moves well without the ball. She's got three-point range. Don't forget a women's volleyball match. The great one we've got coming for you on Friday. Number seven, Pitt, eighth-ranked Georgia Tech, 5 Eastern, the place to be. O'Keefe Gym, and right here on ACCN, coverage starts at 5 Eastern. Top 10 showdown, which we like in the conference these days. Well, that point by NC State's Madison Hayes, Debbie, eliminated a three-minute scoreless drought after that incredibly hot start in the first quarter. So seven points have been scored so far in the second. Five by the pack, two by Charlotte. Lawrence, not this time. And the offensive rebound two. up and in, that was Drew Watkins. It's a great crash from the weak side by Watkins. Transfer from Coppin State. Another See, three off the mark. Team. That's seven straight in the miss by Collins. Excuse me. That double team, Roy, when that ball goes to River Baldwin, she's got to immediately reverse it to the other side of the floor because you got numbers on the other side. She held on to it too long. Watkins turns it over on the traveling violation. You want to make the defense shift and rotate, and I like that Carrick and Swagger is trying something different, trying to trap the wings on that last possession. Let's see what they do here on this defensive possession. And they're going full court pressure. Steal, that's a three. Tapped out by Collins, back to show. Steals missed her first three three-point attempts. Well, that's all right, young freshman. You just got to keep shooting when you're wide open because she is very capable of making those. Watkins has provided a bit of a spot. Feed the post. Tracy Houston with a bounce. Tracy Houston. No. We'll pack six of 19 from distance now. See, that's a, a three that when you have the hot hand, you can take that. But when you've cooled off a little bit, right, and you haven't taken a shot in a while, let the ball go inside the paint and then back out to the perimeter. And a blocking foul call. Houston, slow to get up. Smith will tell her to just stay right there until she can fully collect herself. 
Major Lawrence calling now for assistance from the bench. And some hard contact in the post. Ball will pick up her second personal in that sequence. Charlotte now, Debbie outscoring the pack six to five in the second quarter after 36 to eight barrage in the first 10 minutes. You know, River Baldwin is not a blo shot blocker, really. She's more of a five, six five that rotates trying to draw a charge. I'm glad Tracy could get up and walk off on her own. Tracy Houston, a player that ACC fans should be familiar with as a transfer from Pitt. Well, don't forget the ACC Fall Championships continue Wednesday United United Men's Soccer Simmons. All matches are right here on ACC and the ESPN at the home for the ACC Championships. Six and eight o'clock Eastern. It is that time of year. We're starting to crown a champion. And College basketball has made its triumphant return as of yesterday and today. Only loss for the ACC women coming to the hands of South Carolina in Paris as Notre Dame fell to the Gamecocks yesterday. But outside of that, ball tops across the board. Baldwin missed the chippy, the 49ers control. Tell you what, NC State has not given up anything easy to Charlotte. They have contested. They have done a good job of getting back in transition. And it's easier to set your defense when the ball's going through the net. Here's Steele. And the 49ers actually outscore the pack 7 to 5 in the second. 36 first quarter points. Debbie powering the pack in their season opener. start for this talented freshman class. Our halftime report coming up next. Welcome back, Reynolds Coliseum. The start of our second half in just one minute. NC State all over Charlotte by a score of 41 to 15. Interesting first 20 minutes in the books as we welcome you back. Debbie Antonelli, the Hall of Famer, Roy Philpott. Glad you could join us. And Zia James, really the big story in the first quarter. 19 points cooled off in the second quarter. Debbie, as did the NC State offense a little bit. <laughs> what a start for NC State. I mean, they were playing both sides of the basketball at a very high level to start the beginning of the season in November. I thought it was outstanding. And then Zia James was unreal. What a start. She made three level scoring look easy. She was able to knock down some triples. She get get to her mid-range. She got a beautiful pull-up jump shot. I thought NC State did a really good job of spacing the floor. And her decision making with the basketball in her hands was easy because she was wide open right. and did a nice job of finding some space. Four for five from the three-point line in the first quarter. For Isaiah, Isaiah James, she had 19 first quarter points. And NC State slowed down a little bit in the second quarter, and they're scoring Roy, but their defense held up very well both quarters. Yeah, the defense limiting Charlotte to just 17% from the floor. Pack red hot to start, 10 of 13 from the field. Just one of 18 in the second quarter. And if you're Wes Moore, right, this gives you something to coach to. Hey, our defense has been there. Offensively, it felt like, Debbie, they fell in love with the three-pointer a little bit too much there in that second quarter. Well, and he's looking at his play calling sheet, and he's probably thinking, I don't think I have to get too deep into this call sheet tonight because they have done a really good job of their defense. And, yes, I, I've said a couple times, Roy, I would like to see them play a little bit more through the post just to try to collapse the defense because right now the defense is all spread out trying to guard the three-point line. But uh, uh, this is a, a young woman for Charlotte and Deza Lawrence who needs to get going. She's got to be able to put some points on the board and get Charlotte into a little bit of rhythm on the offensive end. Mentioned the 8-1 start by the ACC so far on the women's side. Some of our other preseason headlines around the conference, it is 
A lot of excitement surrounding the league and the thought of who could go where. Notre Dame, Virginia Tech, Elizabeth Kitley, Georgia Amor coming back for head coach Kenny Brooks. And Jeff Walls and Louisville trying to go back to the Elite Eight for the sixth straight year. There's some contenders in the conference once again. Well, I think it's an incredibly balanced league again. Another tough team, uh, another tough year of great teams. Uh, these teams are good, all right? But I would not be sleeping on North Carolina, nor would I be sleeping on Miami. I think those are two teams that are going to make a lot of noise. Of course, Jeff Walls has done a great job and has another rebuilt roster. And, you know, to go to five consecutive elite aides is elite level. And they are elite on the defensive end. As you take a look at the five teams in the ACC, they're in the top 25, including Florida State, who has a big matchup with Tennessee on Thursday night. That should be really great to see. Well, we've got big matchups up and down the conference, including these NC State Wolfpack, this team against UConn here at Reynolds coming up this Sunday on ABC at 3 o'clock Eastern. And boy, that's a juicy game for game number two for the Pack. Well, Paige Beckers and AZ Fudd for UConn will be the best shot-making backcourt in the country when healthy. And we're all sort of anticipating that they are healthy. And if so, they are going to be tough. And Reynolds will be loud and proud on Sunday for that game. Start of our second half. Can't wait for it. 3 o'clock ABC on Sunday here in Raleigh. We'll pack have it off the miss by Lawrence. NC State will try to set up its offense with Mimi Collins. Now Madison Hayes with a high ball screen. Side James 19 in the first quarter. An offensive foul on the push off here. Very uh, deliberate offensively and a little bit of a slower pace that possession to start the third quarter. I thought NC State did a really good job of moving the ball in the first half. This is when you, you don't play to the scoreboard, Roy, right? You, do, you play to try to get better and, and try to improve. Not always easy to do, right? Yeah. And trying to create a foul's called on Baldwin. That'll be her third. Well, once the post player turns and faces and puts the ball on the floor, she's no longer considered a post player. She's considered a ball handler. And you can't put your hands on them twice. You can get one quick touch, but then when they face up, you can't touch them again with your hands. Off the inbounds, Collins controls the rebound. 41 to 15, almost a minute and a half into our third quarter. Ninth all-time meeting between Charlotte and NC State. Back of one all eight. Sanaya Rivers got caught under the basket against the end line and stepped out of bounds. Well, she thought she got bumped out of bounds. There was contact on the baseline. Mid-range is there, and Charlotte on the scoreboard first. To start our third quarter with Tracy Houston, the senior from Roanoke, Virginia. Rivers on the other side will shoot two, and she wanted the foul. She got the call this time. So Tracy Houston picks up her third. And Sanaya Rivers to the line where she was 63% last year. And a perfect three for three to start this game. Number 22, Two teams are now combined four for 41. Their last 41 shots from the floor. So now Rivers, well, the talent level is there. Debbie talked about the defense, stuff in the stat sheet. And she'll be in the starting five this year, but the accolades were there a season ago coming off the back bench, Debbie. She is on the top 50 Naismith watch list. So she does have the eye of the national voters in terms of her skill set and what she can bring, plus the potential. Offensive foul in Houston. Get out of control in that sequence. Another excellent job of obtaining legal guarding position and then moving 
into the path of the dribbler. And there it is, Isaiah James from downtown, a new career high with 22. Wheeling and dealing down the right side of the lane earns two free throws. See, I think the, a good job of Carica Suegra's team of, in the second half, spreading the floor, looking to drive in the gap, putting some pressure on NC State's defense, trying to get to the bonus, get some easy points at the free throw line. It's a good adjustment here in the second, second half. Eric Swaver told us yesterday the time is now for Deja Lawrence to really get on the map at that mid-major level as a star for the 49ers. He can score at all three levels, preseason second team, all AAC. And tonight it's been a work in progress, just one made field goal in 10 attempts. Just have five rebounds, hasn't turned it over. Four points. This is her fifth year playing in the program, and so she's very familiar with setting the tone and the culture for what Coach Consuegra wants. Zaya James turns it over. Lawrence runs away with it. Four on three the other way. And Lawrence penetrating draws the contact. She's going to go again to the free throw line. She didn't make them the last time, but this is a chance for her to get some easy points. Oh, I thought she was in the act of shooting. My bad. Forty Niners maintain possession. Those blips get us all, don't they? Yeah, it got me. The zoom feed got me that time. <laughs> Shot clock under five. Who wants it? Well, good look for Redbird. Couldn't finish. Rivers the other way. And what a rebound in traffic by Rivers. And off the double team, they'll stop play. A foul called against Charlotte. Porter was in the area along with Yakite. And it is Porter's third personal. Mallory Collier checking in for the first time. She's the freshman from Millington, Tennessee. Memphis Area Player of the Year back in 2022. Her first action, also a member set at top 100 according to ESPN, number 55 in the recruiting rankings. Debbie, do you get into the recruiting rankings and how players are slotted and who's ranked one and who's ranked number 98? I do care who's in the top 10, but after that, I think all of it is really tough to measure. And now that we have the transfer portal, I am like the coaches, you know, I'm more interested in what's happening in the portal just because you can instantly improve your team. Unless you can get one of the top 10 picks in the country, it's okay to go to the portal. And unfortunately, that's where our game is. And there are a lot of high school players that are gonna miss out on a chance to play because of that, but that's where we are. And that's how it goes, unfortunately for them. I hate to say that because I, I want to see our game continue to evolve and get the young players some good development. But if you can instantly improve your team, you're going to the portal to find that piece that you think you need. Collins had the miss, a foul on the other end. It goes against Mimi Collins. That's her first. I mean, think about it like this too, Roy. Like NC State and Westmore didn't have any freshmen last year. This year he's got four, so he signed a top class in the country. So you can understand how it works. Like it ebbs and flows. There's a lot of coaches that don't have freshmen on their roster. Tennessee, the Lady Vols don't have a freshman on their roster. I mean, would you ever think you'd ever say that, right? But if you can go to the portal, and look what Wes has done. He's been able to get one of the top four classes in women's college basketball. So, and these kids are gonna be expected to play and play at a very high level very quickly for NC State to have success. 46 to 19, a couple of free throws. Charlotte's been playing much better after a slow start. And if you're Kara Consuegra, I think you 
go to the film and say the first quarter we wish we could file that one away and forget about it. Last two have been better, but here comes Madison Hayes for the pack. I mean, what a great backdoor cut. Terrific timing. The pass goes into the high post. As soon as Collins hits it, it's a dive from the weak side by Hayes. That's an excellent play and a great look on the backdoor cut. Six points, five boards for Hayes. Philosophically, in your opinion, just putting a ball on the end of that conversation, does that mean we see fewer number of high school recruits signing with Power 5 schools in the near future because of the portal? I hate to say it's trending that way, but I'm afraid so. Uh, now, this is an interesting year because this is an older year, right? We had the COVID year, and this is going to be the last. We have one more year of COVID players, and one more year of fifth and potentially six-year players, and then it's going to come back a little bit. But right now, it's trending that way. Collins from the corner from downtown. Considering that Mimi Collins made nine triples all of last year, and she's made three here in the first game, it shows her player development in the offseason. That means she got in the gym and she worked on her threes. She's got 11, the steal by James. James has 24 and a chance for one more at the line. This is a great job of anticipating in the passing lane. And NC State, their defense once again has been outstanding. James gets a jump on it. And a chance for an and one when we come back. What a start for NC State. The pack explosive in that first quarter with 36 points. And leading Charlotte by a score 54-21. All due respect to our friends in the Queen City. 49ers have brighter days ahead, but... Isaiah James has happened tonight, Debbie. Wow. I mean, this is what we love about college basketball, right? I mean, uh, Isaiah James last year gets to start the last six games and has what looks like a tremendous offseason and gets NC State out of the gates quickly. And Coach Consuegra, whose team is entering into a new conference in the American South Florida is the team to beat in that league. Jose Fernandez and his team, I've seen them practice. They're really good. I mean, they're a, they're a typical NCAA tournament team, whether they win their league or not, and they'll be picked to win the American once again this year. Well, does such a great job recruiting internationally, and he just seems to reload every year from overseas. I'm impressed with uh, his depth uh, and those international players that you referenced. Uh, they all can pass and they, they accelerate through their cuts. And those are some of the things that NC State's done well tonight. I think they've passed the ball well, they've hit the shooting pocket. That matters for a shooter like Isaiah James. She's going back to the line to keep adding to her total. Missed that last free throw, but James also had 23 points their exhibition win last Thursday, so. She's been riding a heater of sorts, and now 25 points tonight. Her old career high of 20, long since surpassed with 19 in the first quarter this evening. You know, the thing that I have noticed right away is her change of pace. She's always been shifty. But I think her ability to read, coming off pin downs, her ability to space the floor, catch and shoot, and she can get to the free throw line. So that's a... Very good offensive weapon for Coach Moore. Lacey Steele checks back in. The Watkins top of the key, the crossover, and the drive swatted away by Maddie Cox. And I love that set for Charlotte where you put Deja Lawrence at the elbow and you run her through the horn set and you try to get her the ball going to her right hand. I mean, Coach Swagger is continuing to dig deep into that playbook to try to find a way to get Lawrence going. Off the screen, the 16-footer is there. There it is. There, you see, going right with that pull-up jump shot. Little screen right there off the elbow in the slot. And she can get to the nail. Lawrence with six. She averaged 17 a season ago. 
So he books back on the floor, the crossover, and the jumper no good. Board played by Rembert. Here comes Smith the other way. Rembert will get it back mid-range. Brooks controls. Madison Hayes. Out of bounds, it'll stay with the pack. Watch this screen right off the elbow, right off the slot. It's a perfect angle. See, and right there, that's where Cox and Hayes have to communicate. So you have to level off Lawrence at that screen. And you go under, because Hayes went under, because you want to go under until she hits a three. Cox, nifty fake. Rejected inside by Smith, better defense. The 49ers with a little mojo here until the rejection by Collier. Brooks to Hayes, that's a three. And the 49ers back the other way, the layup. Nia Young. Nia Young. That's the first easy basket Charlotte's had all game. The 49ers have made 10 field goals now, Debbie, just 22%. And when she was streaking into the open court, I was thinking, okay, here comes a potential layup, and we just haven't seen a single one of those, primarily because of NC State's rock solid defense you've been talking about. I mean, they have been high hands on the catch. They have been in the gap when necessary. Their scout is point on point. Charlotte didn't shoot the three very well last year, and they're struggling again tonight. And that's one area that I think Coach Consuegra thought had improved with her team. Fifty-six twenty-five. They'll check the clock on the scoreboard. That foul should be two shots. After Smith picked up her third. So Collier at the line. And then she connects for her first point at NC State. Coming up Sunday, Lehigh Man will take on North Carolina, followed by women's doubleheader, The Ville and DePaul. And North Carolina hosting Davidson will wrap up the night with a nothing but that crew in Durham. What a way to tip off the season, of course, right here on ACCN and ESPN app. And you know, games in November, Roy, you know, for me, I try not to get too high or too low over what I see, right? Because these teams are going to change so much in the next few weeks. And then you get to conference play and it goes to another level. You know, and then you get to postseason and it's at another level. So, you know, NC State's got to be pleased with their start. And if you're still figuring out roles, right? I mean, you're still defining all that and trying to figure out your rotation and where your best defensive team is and who's your best in the two-man game. And all that stuff takes a little time to figure out and sort through. But it's nice to have a lot of options. That's the one thing about coaching in the ACC. You got a lot of options because there's a lot of talent. Steal the miss, Hayes the rebound. And she was fouled on the putback. A chance for three more for Madison Hayes. Now has eight points tonight. This is a good look for Steele, who's just a little bit short, and that's a great offensive effort and rebound by Hayes, who has quietly filled up the stat sheet, doing her job very well, right? And that's the way Madison Hayes is going to play. It might not be a night. She can get you 20, but she's going to be the kind of player that Westmore can count on to get you know, eight and six and a few assists, and he doesn't even have to run a play for her because she's that savvy on the floor. She can make plays without you having to run a play for her. And the 49ers hit their first three now, one of 12 from downtown. It's a big one for Rembert. You mentioned Hayes and her production. How about a uh, traveling call there? She tried to Get the ball down before the feet came down. Couldn't do it, but 9.7 boards, three dives. That is productive in 23 minutes, Debbie. 
Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, right? And I didn't even see the stat sheet to know that those that was close to what her numbers would be because that's the way she plays, and that's what you love about her. Bonnie Smith left open, side rim. Molly Collier with the rebound. Here's Rivers. Well, she has a different gear with a ball in her hands. And she'll get it back. Oh, Great right. bounce pass to Steele, who lost it. Such a good feed. I mean, look at this right here. You're creating separation, and then you just see that play happen before it happens. And it's good D to collapse by Charlotte to force a turnover. Under a minute to go in the third quarter, 60 to 28 NC State. Back never trailed tonight. And Houston fouled over the back by Collier. That's her first. Both teams in the bonus. Mallory, a multi-time finalist for the Gatorade Player of the Year in Tennessee. Number 55 in the 2023 class, according to ESPN. We'll have a seat there on the bench. With Houston at the line, 76% a year ago. Houston on the line for Charlotte. The one thing I'll say about Coach Consuegra's team and, and just knowing her and how much effort she puts into trying to put a competitive product on the floor. You can tell by her body language and her teams that they have not quit. Yeah. Steel contacts and count the bucket. So there's also a flop call, which is a new, okay, it's been an emphasis, but it's never had a penalty. Now it has a penalty. And this, First call right here, the flop, will be a warning. The next time any of the Charlotte players fake being fouled, which is what the NCAA prefers we say, not flop, but fake being fouled, that would be a technical foul. So that's a warning. That's the first warning. But there still was contact on the play and a free throw awarded with Wade picking up the personal. So wait a second, I'm confused now. There's not a flop call, there's a foul. Well, there had, there had to have been because the free throw was awarded, but I did see the what you indicated, too, on the signal by this veteran officiating crew. I saw a flop. I saw the official give the flop sign. But there was a foul, so it must not have been a flop. Okay. With the foul, Still, so that our, our viewers understand that, that, you know, the men have had that rule in, and they, this year, they don't even give a warning on the men's side. If there's a flop or a fake being fouled, there will be a technical issue. The women's game finally has a penalty on it. You know, some will say there's always been a penalty, but that was only if you went to the monitor and you saw a flop. Yeah. Now you, this will help take it out of the game, because the men have used it for two years, and it's out of the game. Rivers now with nine points, four boards, three assists. Shot clock is off, 65 to 30. NC State leading Charlotte. Back have gone wire to wire. 49ers will play for the final shot of the third. The Usyk will feed Houston inside. The spin and the bounce. Very well executed there by Charlie. Good time and score. Clock management at the end of the quarter. And NC State with a commanding lead heading into the fourth. It's been all wolf pack for the first 30 minutes. Now the spotlight in the game. Everybody will be talking about later this week in a top 10 showdown. Debbie Antonelli between Caitlin Clark, Elizabeth Kitley, Georgia Amore, Virginia Tech, and Iowa. And uh, Caitlin Clark had the basketball world buzzing last year. But she's not the original CC, right? How about Coach Consuegra <laughs> back in the day at Iowa? 
I love it. Uh, we had such fun talking to Kara about this and how proud that Iowa alumni base is about what Caitlin Clark and the Iowa team was able to do last year. I'm excited about that game on Thursday. I've been waiting for months for that game. And Virginia Tech is going to come in with Elizabeth Kitley, back-to-back -back ACC Player of the Year at 6'6". With that incredible footwork and her step back, that's tough to close the space on that and guard her. It's going to be a challenge for everyone all season. And Georgia Amor proved last year she's the best point guard, not only in the ACC, one of the top point guards in the country. And Kara was a great point guard her day at Iowa. I recovered Kara uh, as a point guard at Iowa in the NCAA tournament years ago. She's done an excellent job building this program at Charlotte, and they've played much better in the second half. Yeah, really since the end of that first quarter, Debbie Antonelli will have filled Bob back and Reynolds Coliseum. Score tells the story. I do want to give your thoughts on Iowa's opponent in the national championship game last year, LSU, of course, Angel Reese, LSU won that game. But a surprising loss yesterday by the Bayou Bengals against Colorado out in Vegas. What were your thoughts on kind of how things started for Kim Mulkey's bunch the second go around? I will be happy to give that to you when we come back from this break. Charlotte, 65-32, NC State, leading Charlotte. 8.51 to go back in Raleigh, 65-32. As you take a look at the AP preseason top 10, that poll, LSU, the defending champs at number one. South Carolina probably going to move up after its win against Notre Dame yesterday. Uh, what else strikes you here with Iowa at number three and NC State's next opponent, UConn at number two, Debbie? <laughs> well, UConn's going to move to number one. Uh, should they beat NC State? Uh, and Colorado all of a sudden made NC State's schedule a lot tougher with their upset over LSU last night. That's a veteran team. There's three players on that Colorado roster that have beaten a number one in the past. And that's what uh, we were talking about before, uh, to our point about older players and more experience and making the product really good. You know what? I started to think watching that LSU game, man, the NCAA tournament is going to be so good. And the pressure on the committee to get the seating right, you're going to have to get it right because there's a lot of teams where seating is going to matter. Now, you and I thing too, have a good you know, fortune. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go know, ahead. I was just going to say, watching, you know, Coach Mulkey at the beginning of the game, because I had I'd read about what you said about, you know, we're not going to go undefeated, and this is going to be a, a work in progress in some ways. As much talent as they have on that roster, there are new roles to fill, and they might have missed uh, Morris a little bit more than they thought, their point guard from last year. And she did not overreact. She didn't get upset. She she was very calm and poised and patient on the sideline, almost to me as if she knew that this was going to be really tough. Uh, and this is not going to be an easy task this season with a target on their back everywhere they go. And again, you're bringing in so many new personalities. Nisha Morrow, Haley Van Lip from the portal. Once again with a team championship pedigree. I think Coach Mulkey probably understood better than most, having seen her team, that it's going to take some time to blend that all together. It just doesn't happen with every team overnight, even a team blessed with that much talent. Well, there's a lot that goes into it, and I, I've heard her say before, as she's won other championships, you know, we're not defending anything. This is a new year, new team. Yeah. Everyone is in a new role. Everyone is in a new role. And it takes time for all these teams. And we're just in November. It's going to be great. 67-34. A couple of free throws by Nia Young for Charlotte. There's just a lot of teams that can win, you know, and winning is hard. It's getting harder. Rivers off the mark, tracked down by Steele and a fresh 20. Good look inside, back to Rivers. A great cut by Rivers from the weak side. Right behind her defense. Pass from Steele. Debbie, the way that Rivers moves and jumps around, at times it feels like she's on a pogo stick and taking taking the kinds of leaps that most other players 
unathletic enough to be able to take. It's impressive, and a foul inside will put the 49ers back in the line. And that's it right there, the athleticism, the length, and the desire. I mean, this is a determined young woman to make some plays and make things happen. She just does a nice job of cutting into space, and it's a great job by Steele to have her eyes up. One more free throw coming for Houston. She's in double figures now with 11. Perfect at the line tonight as well. Give her 12. Now four fourth to strike. There's 11 points and five boards. Isaiah James, James checks back in. in James with 26, five of eight from distance. Couple of rebounds and assists tonight with Tin and White. Lizzie Williamson back on the court, a little high and low. Hayes gets it back. And she'll shoot two. Now the contact was there with Caroline Teal in the area. So Teal picks up her first. Hayes back to the line. Three or four there tonight. Nine points overall. Stuff in that stat sheet with nine, eight, and three so far. One more free throw upcoming. The ACC Fall Championships continue Wednesday night at the Soccer Simmies. Both matches, 6 and 8 Eastern, right here on ACCN. Also on the ESPN app, home of the ACC Champions. If you're just tuning in, NC State, 36 first quarter points including 19 by James. That's the best in any quarter by any NC State player in tradition-rich history of the school. James cooled off a little bit. The pack offense did as well, but not been challenged tonight by Charlotte. Zion with 26 overall, 7 of 11 from the court. 50 seasons of NC State basketball. They'll be celebrating that all season in Reynolds Coliseum. NC State showing zone the last couple of possessions here. And a Great dish time. inside. Fox would love to have that one back. Brooks will take care of it. Zoe Brooks. Lawrence. Zoe with 10 has had multiple defenders on her tonight, Roy, and, and I think that's going to be her life in the American. She's going to get the respect of uh, other teams with the best defender. Looks off the steal against Teal. Lays it in. Zoe's got 12. It's been a balanced attack by NC State. A lot of players getting in the scoring column. Five players now in double figures for the Wolfpack. Here's Wade, bothered by Williamson. And Lizzie will get the rebound. So the black defensive player of the year with a blocked shot. She's got four boards tonight, steal off the mark. And Steele's going to have to shoot the ball with confidence because she's definitely capable. And when she comes on the floor, that's going to be her job. I've got her at one for seven tonight. And there's Lawrence to triple. That has to feel good to see the ball go in the basket from that range. And now Lawrence with nine points, her first made three. Niners showing a 1-3-1. One, one. Brooks will get back a miss. And then James watches that one tear him out of bounds. Joey Brooks off the D. Does a great job of finishing with a little bump. NC State in command.
Well, NC State head coach Wes Moore has won more than 800 games. We asked him earlier today, what was your highlight of the offseason this year, coach? And he said, watching my Texas Rangers win the World Series. It had been 60 years in the making. He's there, some of his friends enjoying uh, the new ballpark there in Arlington. The Rangers finally did it, having been a strikeaway back in 2011. But Debbie Antonelli brings up the important point. If you watch the World Series this year, you were one of probably around nine plus million people to do so on average. But guess what? The women's championship game at the end of the NCAA tournament actually averaged more than what the Major League Baseball World Series did this year in terms of viewers. Almost 10 million versus 9.11 million. That's impressive when you put that in perspective, thinking about America's pastime versus the growing sport of women's basketball. It's exciting, and it's a moment that we have to continue to build on as stakeholders in the game, and everyone has a responsibility, whether you're a coach, a player, an official, an administrator, a leader, a broadcaster, whatever, a fan. We, we need to all step forward and help keep the momentum going. And I can tell you right now, on Thursday night, when Caitlin Clark shows up in Charlotte, and there's nearly 15,000 people in a made-for-TV, made-for-the-fan event, that's called building on the momentum. And the Charlotte Sports Commission should be recognized for that. Danny Morrison's done a great job putting that game together with Virginia Tech and Iowa. I can't wait. Well, I think the sport overall, too, with... NC State UConn Sunday on ABC at 3 o'clock. Yesterday, Notre Dame, South Carolina in Paris. A top 10 showdown between the SEC and the ACC. The non-conference matchups this year, Debbie, feel like they've been ratcheted up a couple of notches. And it's the perfect time to do it, to do exactly what you're talking about. Build off the momentum of last year's run where almost 6 million people watch the Final Four. Then 10 million watch the championship. I'm excited about it, and, and I'm, I'm doing, trying to do my part to advance the game every day. I was in the football stadium at Kinnick Stadium for Iowa's 55,646,000 people that attended to set an attendance record. It was amazing. And the putback, the Akite. And a chance for three. And she's been active in this second half. She's got five points. And a chance for one more. Check that seven down. A chance to reach eight at the line to go along with three rebounds for the freshman. Well, I think Coach Consuegra is going to have some good film to break down with her team. They're going to get better moving forward. I have no doubt about that. And again, I mean, you don't want to pare it down to just what happened in the first quarter because NC State was so dominant. But after the first quarter, Charlotte has been very competitive tonight, the second, third, and fourth so far. And see, there's a good piece of film for Coach Moore to work on with Zoe Brooks. You inbound the basketball into the corner, and Coach Consuegra's team is trapping. So Zoe Brooks dribbled right into that trap. That's a good one, teaching point. Zoe's got 12 tonight, five rebounds, two dimes, two turnovers. Number nine player in the 2023 class. Westmore signs a top four class, brings it to Riley. Highest rated NC State recruiting class ever. Four talented freshmen who pretty much have all factored in in some way, shape, or form tonight. Well, they get a chance to work on their zone defense a little bit. Not a defense that Coach Moore likes to play very often, but he will sprinkle it in once in a while. Coach was pretty happy talking about that World Series run by his Texas Rangers, wasn't he? That, that put him in a good mood. <laughs> he grew up in the Dallas area, and that was one of his teams. He likes the so Cowboys, to, too, just so you know. Well, forgive him for that, but he went to the two World Series games in 2011 as well, including a couple in this run. Rangers just needed five games to topple Arizona. And he'll go back, he'll review the film of this game. The 36 first quarter points, Debbie, and only 42 since the 10 minute mark reached in that first frame. And he knows 
these ladies will have their eyes set on UConn. And what, it's going to be a phenomenal atmosphere. I, I've always said Reynolds Coliseum, when it's packed, men, women, whoever it is, they're going to be as loud and as proud as any fan base in America. Aisha from downtown, the freshman from Cairo, Egypt. And she'll get it back. How about another one? Steel tacks it down. Side a layup and a yell to boot for Lacey Steele, the freshman from Edmond, Oklahoma. She's got seven. Well, I think NC State answered a few questions tonight. You know, their core was excellent. What a great start. Isaiah James, fantastic with 19 first quarter points. That's a career best. No one in the history of the 50 years of NC State has ever done that. It's impressive. And then the, the freshman, I thought, off to a good start as well. Wolfpack doubling up Charlotte, 84-42. State will improve the 1-0 in the season before UConn comes to town. And an offensive foul drawn by Steele. She was in that new restricted area, which is right underneath the cylinder. She was actually out of this restricted area. That's why she was able to draw that charge. It's a much smaller circle now. Not that arc that you see on the floor. That will be for the men. The women will not use that any longer. Six and a half second differential between the clocks. Steel caught fire in the fourth quarter. Short of the way up here. And the 49ers will have one more crack at it. The shot clock off. NC State, the freshman class, living up to the billing. Good start for Sanaya Rivers. And a foul inside. That'll go against Collier. 4.6 seconds to go. Well, make sure you hang around with us after this game. As I James will join us. Get a sense of what it was like to set a career high essentially in a quarter tonight. There's 19 points. She'll end up with 26. for a second miss free throw. That means free Chick-fil-A, but not this time. Should be the final point of the night. Good start for the Pats. They were picked eighth in the preseason. Media poll in the ACC. They've got the talent to uh, climb that ladder, so to speak. And great to see NC State off and running. One and all the season, 84-43, the final, Debbie. Well, I thought their defense was outstanding and really set the tone. Uh, I think Coach Moore is going to be pleased with their effort on that end of the floor and then Isaiah James was fantastic to get them off to a great start. NC State shot the ball very well in the first quarter. They made six of their first nine threes and their defense held Charlotte to 21%. That was an outstanding effort. 49ers fall to 0-1. State improves to 1-0 with UConn coming to town Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern on ABC and Westmore's team with that incredible fast start. 36 points in the first quarter tonight. And Isaiah James with 19 in that frame, the highest scoring quarter for any player in yes, NC State history. And Isaiah joins us right now. Uh, 19 first quarter points, Isaiah. Welcome to uh, our post game here. Thanks for what did you have for breakfast this morning? Because uh, everything was working for you today. Uh, I definitely had a kiwi quitter smoothie from Chocolate Smoothies. <laughs> That's it. It worked out well. It worked out well for you. <laughs> Isaiah, it, this team has a strong core. And the great start in the first quarter it wasn't just your 
offense, it was your team defense. Describe a little bit about why you guys were able to get locked in so quickly. Um, just preparing off season and just preparing after practice and stuff like that and coming together and being 110% every day, just grinding every day, you know, this is the outcome. Well, the outcome was impressive. You know who's coming to town Sunday yes. with Connecticut and what, what a potential matchup that could be, but what kind of gets you riled up in thinking about what that game could look and feel like on Sunday as I we just doing one step at a time you know we just preparing this whole week watching film watching this film that this last game see our mistakes and just execute it for next game so we can uh, have better decisions well it was a high level of execution tonight we appreciate the time and uh, enjoy this season opening win Will before UConn comes this weekend thank you Tia James yeah. career high tonight 26 19 in the first 10 minutes Impressive in every sense of the word for Debbie Antonelli. I'm Roy Fulpon, our entire hardworking ESPN crew. We say good night from Reynolds Coliseum, where NC State got it done in a major way in game number one. Once again, our final score, 84-43, to 43, as we say good night from Raleigh.